someday your boat will look just about like this. This is about a 95% pre-construction of the boat without any glue to allow me to test fit all the pieces. And then I, after this I took it all apart. And mar I marked the pieces where they go and drilled all the holes and all that stuff while it's together. Took it all apart and then put it together. Um, this is uh, probably the ideal way to build this boat because you can get everything right. Hope to get it in the water yet this year. Six support that's uh, set up on a couple of legs, legs on each end, keep it off the floor. Um, and then you've got the two bottoms there and uh, one of the keels showing. These pieces were, have been cut out and test fitted. See if this is. I've got the keel on the bottom of this one. Not glued yet. I'm going to take that apart and glue it now. It's my next step. And glue them both. These have, are cut out of one inch thick plywood uh, with this uh, uh, sawtooth scarf, about an inch and a half long scarf, sawtooth pattern. Uh, the keels are, are scarfed in the same way. So we'll get some work done here. So I've uh, put the bulkheads on. So just screwed down to the bottoms. And then added these stringers. Go all the way from the transom, they're notched into the bulkheads, and uh, go up to the front here where they end with a, a little piece, sort of like a, a breast hook. Take a, a little closer look at that. This is a chunk of the one inch plywood. Same as the bottoms and the keels. It's kind of handy because there's a lot of six. There's 16 foot lumber available for these stringers and uh, uh, notching it into this and creating the this bow piece uh, allows me to use a continuous piece for the stringers. And you can see that the bulkheads have strips. Anchor them to the bottom. Now I'm going to see uh, see about one of the hulls is fully planked, and I'm working on the second one. Just give you some idea how how this should go. Uh, one thing you do is you do this rudder tube box assembly that all gets put in place before the side planks are put on. Uh, and that's be mostly because it has to be it's screwed up to this stringer. Um, and then all this, the joints are filleted in here uh, really nice and tight around the rudder top. R again, r around that box. This is a sealed flotation chamber in here, and this is a free flooding area in there. Now, what I've been doing is uh, tilting it on its side like this, just just for the uh, convenience of 
gluing up the uh, edges, edges of the bottom and the edge of the stringer. That's, it's, so you're working down. If, it, if it's up, then you're working slightly uphill and under, and uh, that's a lot harder. And this is light enough that you can easily roll it like this on this building jig. So now I'm about ready to just uh, plank. I'm going to tilt this back up and plank the other side of the front. Now, if you if you can do all the planks in one work session, uh, that's good. But if you can't, at least do do them in pairs, matching pairs, and from side to side. Uh, so, like I'm going to do the front, the other front side now. So now the outer front side panel is on. Now, I, I actually put the panel on while the boat is upright. Uh, I thought maybe it would be easier laying down, but it really isn't. It's, it's easier to get it in direct, directly into position uh, this way. What you do is make sure that when you do the pre-assembly, you do a real clear pencil mark where this, pan, where this plank is going to end, both the top and the bottom. And then when you're putting the glue on, Try to leave the little space around the around the uh, where the screw is going to go in, so that like there's a hole like that over there, so you won't obscure that hole too much. So you can if you can get that those two screws in the right hole, even th start with the bottom one, because up at the front uh, the plank is going to be laying on the building jig, and that's going to put it at the right angle and in the right position. Here there's nothing nothing to do that. Uh, Another little tip might be when you prepare this plank, uh, make sure that it's it's some some of the edge is not quite even with the bottom side of the of the bottom, but make sure that is right there. So you're, you're, when you're putting it in place, you can feel it. If it's flush on the bottom and you can see the pencil line right up against it, then you're you're in. Now we're doing these two front ones uh, as a team here because. Uh, one will start to maybe distort the boat to one direction a little bit. So uh, basically, uh, uh, when I put the first one on, I didn't tighten it right up against the the uh, piece in there. Uh, I left the last screw out, and then when I put them put had them both on, then I, I pulled it together, and the bow is pulled together. Let me get work around the other side here. Uh, with the with one inch screws that go through this plank into the uh, into the other one, um, it's a little bit like stitching glue, except it's not using wire ties, but just driving screws through. So there's a, a series of those that go right down to the bottom. And as you're putting those in, you you've done this dry fit first, you know, so you'll know that uh, uh, you, you've got it straight. Uh, because there's the potential of getting the the uh, boat a little cockeyed there, but uh, probably not to where you would notice it. But you know, if you want to do a careful job, make sure you do it uh, in the test fit. Put these put these screws in, and then use the same holes when you're putting it back together. Yeah. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, both planks on the. The, both of the, uh, the middle planks and the two smaller ones at the ends. Both hulls are planked. And then I've added the uh, rub rails. They're on the outside. There's another little piece that's going to go on the front inside of the bow too. And then there's a strip that's going to help to support the bridge deck right here. This kind of uh, doubles up the, uh, the edge here, makes this quite solid. And then the uh, bridge deck panel will go across that and make it really solid. Um, uh, I've added in couple of stiffeners here. See like we have this, we have the uh, splice, the butt block there, 
and then eight feet up over here, we have another butt block. Uh, and those help to support the side panels. We actually strengthen it there, even though it's a, a butt block. It uh, makes the whole thing stronger than it would be if it was just a continuous flat piece because of the extra thickness. So I figured for good measure, put one midway in this span uh, just to stiffen that uh, side panel up a bit. And there's one on the, the inboard side and the outboard side. And then I've cleaned up inside a little bit uh, and uh, getting ready to fill it, the inside fillet seams, inside seams of the, between the uh, bottom and the planking. And up the bulkheads. And in the stem. Some of the interior filleting was done, the, especially up in the bow area. I filleted that bow seam really well. Take a look at that again, we turn it over. But uh, that was in preparation to turning it over like this. So I could work on the bottom and shape the bow. Uh, I've basically uh, rounded the, the uh, chine line uh, where the bottom, side meets the bottom. Just a little bit of a radius there. And cleaned up everything. Tried to go, go over the uh, where the where the butt blocks were screwed in. Try and make that smooth. Turning the hull over like this and propping it up uh, makes it pretty easy to do the bottom. I'll be putting a strip of fiberglass uh, tape along this edge and uh, fill it in this corner between the keel and the bottom. See what shaping the fronts looks like here. Right here at the knuckle. Um, inside I put a second piece of the one inch ply uh, just about that long, shaped the same as this tip. Uh, so it, it slid forward a little bit, got right into the corner. So this ended up being two inches thick right in here. That gave me enough meat so I could grind this off and make a, a nice smooth curve of this. And I'm putting a, this has been beveled a little bit on both sides, this one inch, because I'm going to put a three quarter inch strip of uh, stainless steel on here and I think I'll bring it right down over here as far as I can. Yeah, so it's coming along pretty good. Now, to get these to set at a uh, close to a upside down position, I've had to do some extra propping on the building jig here uh, at this at the back end here I've got a, an extra oh, about three inches of stuff three and a half inches of stuff underneath this edge and uh, up at the front I actually attached a little temporary strut to the jig right here this vertical piece. Uh, and then to fine tune it, I put in another shim. Uh, and then to fine tune it even further, I used a little wedge on this side just to keep it so when you're working on the bottom, it doesn't rock back and forth. You have to be a little bit careful because these extra, this is uh, it's only quarter inch plywood. And, uh, 
So when you roll it over, you want to let it down easy. But everything is stiff enough and strong enough to withstand this kind of mistreatment. Okay, the bottom work has been finished on the hulls. Ready to turn them back over again and start putting it together with the bridge deck. It's two coats of epoxy uh, on the, all the, the sides and the bottom and everything, and, and um, three coats on the bottom below the water line. The, the dark color is what uh, the area that I expect to be below the water line. Uh, uh, what Above that a little bit, I think, because uh, I'm not, I won't know where the water line is till I actually drop it in the water. I'd like to get it just right. This being a new design and all. And you see, I put the uh, stainless steel keel strips on the top, top edge, bottom edge of the keels. And, uh, yeah, these aren't too hard to handle. Uh, I've been able to roll them over myself. Okay, there they are back up right and in position. Now, when I was doing the pre-assembly before gluing, um, I actually went almost all the way through the boat and cut out the bridge deck pieces, cabin pieces, and all that stuff. Kind of depends on how you feel about it, but I kind of like to do that because then I, of course this was a prototype, this was a new one, so uh, I needed to do that so I could make changes along the way. Uh, but anyhow, uh, to get these, you want these hulls to be parallel to each other and, and uh, square, same, uh, you know, the diagonals are square. And the way I did that initially was uh, I set up these uh, supports parallel to each other, rear one and the front one, um, and I made them square to each other, measure the diagonals basically, it's the best way to do it. And then when I put the bottoms on the, on the jig, uh, I measured where the edge, outer edge was, including the thickness of the uh, planking. So I've got the, the, uh, the supports are, are in the right place and they're square. Now I moved them around a bit when I was rolling the hulls over and because uh, I, I knew I was going to do that, uh, I actually made some marks on the floor see the uh, red dry mark there. These are superimposed over all my sail patterns. Uh, but those showed me uh, exactly where the, where the support is. Uh, now, so that gave me, uh, I could put the supports back in the exact same position they were in before. Uh, I had these marks, you can see right here, one pencil mark on the outer edge where the so it shows the position for the hulls from side to side uh, but then fore and aft uh, <coughs> in retrospect uh, I guess I could have just measured that distance along the bottom All right now I'm ready to join the hulls I've gotten started with the putting the bridge deck in and the strategy I use for this is to uh, there are four panels uh, for the bridge deck. There's this forward piece that's about uh, 30 inches wide and almost eight feet long. And then there's going to be a four, almost four by eight one in here. And then there's two shorter ones that uh, for the cabin area because they stop right here in the edge of the hull. Uh, now what I do is uh, I get that I've got that front one in place. I coated the bottom side of this one, which is the farthest back, this one here, this is the rear one, and uh, the front one, and I put those both in place dry, test fitted them, 
and tested putting the beams, they're, they're under bridge deck beams, uh, two of them. And uh, these are them setting up here. Uh, I've got them coated with epoxy and, uh, uh, and I know exactly where they go because uh, I've tried them in place. They have a curve underneath them because the bridge deck is curved slightly fore and aft, not much. Uh, so I'll be putting, I'll be turning this one over. Uh, and this is what I did when I test fitted them. I had both the front one and the back one in place, but again, without the glue. Put those underneath there, see where they go and make sure everything fits and everything. Uh, and then I took it apart. I coated the bottom of, of this one and the forward one. I put the forward one in. And now I'll be putting the back one in. Uh, and then after the, these two are in place, I'll put those uh, those two under deck beams in, uh, anchoring them at each end, and then I can kind of uh, get at the uh, middle ones and, and and get those in place. Uh, yeah, there's before I put this piece in, I I put in these one, two, uh, three strips supports that go in, into this one uh, this one coincides uh, with the seam in here um, and this one is just uh, spanning this area in here that's a little bit too big it'll be a little springy without that all right uh, time to sling some epoxy here yeah so there we are with the uh, the rearmost uh, bridge deck panel put in place and the frontmost. And there's a little cross beam up there at the top edge, the, up on the top side of the front edge of that frontmost one uh, that stiffens it up. Uh, and on the back, there's this panel that goes across the back that stiffens the, uh, the rear one. Uh, and then we can, I got started with putting, I put the, slid those beams underneath and uh, at this point, you can stand in the hull and reach in to get those inner screws. Um, so now there's one of the uh, the big panel is uh, is coated and ready to slip into place, and and the smaller one is over there. And it's ready too. Hopefully, all the rest of this will go just as smoothly. Although bridge deck panels are in place. I put the uh, this one in here, the forward one for the middle one in last. Actually ended up having to trim the edge a little bit to squeeze it in there. I think when they all get put in with glue, they take a little more room than uh, without. So you can leave a little leeway on that. Now these are just butt glued here along this seam because there's this there's support right under here and support under here and uh, glue that well and butt it together and uh, it won't be any problem. Okay after I got all three of those all four of those panels in um, well the first thing I did is I crawled around underneath a little bit and cleaned up where they glue where they meet the uh, uh, the under deck beams just to get things a little neat down there even though hopefully nobody will ever see it uh, and then the next thing I did was getting ready for this front combing and the last thing I've done now is the front combing but before that um, there's a, a piece right in here there's actually two one on, one on each side goes all the way across to there and that as a stop for that uh, for that front combing when it comes forward so it's cut on a curve to match where that combing is going to go all the way yeah uh, and then the rub rails these inner rub rail pieces were put on uh, 
the combing is attached to that. It's, it's screwed all along that bottom edge and to here and butted against here and this is all these everywhere where it touches is glued really well. <clears throat> this uh, We're going to be filleting in here and sealing this really carefully because this area will be a sealed flotation chamber. So this uh, kind of butt joint here needs to be filleted on both sides and uh, we want to make that basically airtight. Now where those ends meet, the uh, end of the front combing meets the end of the side panel, which is it's actually an extension of the side panel that forms this combing. Uh, they're butted together and glued with a couple little screws just to hold it in place while the glue sets. Uh, now this is all, this is a quarter inch now, it's going to be doubled more than doubled with, with the application of a 3 8 inch piece on the inside. And this is 3 8 and it's going to be more than doubled uh, down a ways uh, with a piece added on the inside. Also a piece of 3 8 A piece of quarter. This will be quarter going in there I believe. Oh and see this little stop in here. This is a temporary piece so that when you're setting the combing down in, it takes it gets a good bend to get it into place. Uh, so uh, you can drop it down behind that fairly easily before it's everything is perfectly in place, side to side and whatnot. And then uh, start putting screws in that will pull it back the rest of the way. So that little piece is going to come out. So this front panel is a, it's a pretty nice uh, structural member too because it gives a acts as a cross beam to stiffen the hull. I've started putting in the forward deck structure. It's basically a, uh, a beam here that goes straight across. It's made out of a 2 by 8 It's notched in the back because a piece of decking is going to lay in there. comes through the side planking. And is, boy, that's ugly. I smear it up with epoxy to make sure it's totally sealed because this is a flotation chamber in here. It's a couple of screws up under into this rub rail, but that's mostly to hold it while the glue dries. Of course, it's exactly the same on the right and the left side. And then there's this rather complex looking central member here. Uh, this is a it's it's cut like that because the mass the four four mass step has to go right down into there and bury. Uh, goes right down all the way to the bottom where the bottom deck is going to so it'll be a bottom panel in here that will be the stop for it. but uh, in order to make a nice solid continuous piece uh, I've used this is a 2 by spruce inch and a half and then 1 inch ply uh, and then 5 eighths so the next thing I did was to put that bottom the bottom panel on in this front deck area. It's um, uh, attached back here with screws and then bent up into place. Screws up here. And uh, after that, um, uh, now I've hidden a couple of things. There's a couple of beams or supports that go across here, one here and one here, to stiffen this forward deck. Uh, those are put in. And uh, and then areas are filleted or whatnot in there. The, in fact, that, that bottom panel that I was showing you from underneath is filleted to the side plank very solidly. Um, 
very important. Um, and then these two panels are separate pieces and they're slid under the rub rail uh, attached up here and um, glued really well to the uh, underside of the rub rail and they might even do a little more filleting up here they butt up onto this, there's a little strip on the, I think we saw that, the strip on here. Um, and this one has the big cutout in it for the anchor well. Uh, so that's uh, attached down to the uh, front panel here, the, of the, anchor, the rear panel of the anchor well. And then, the, uh, okay, now you'll notice here I put this on the trailer already. Uh, but the, uh, uh, this, this rather elegant looking horn shaped piece of spruce here is attached, uh, attached to, the, to the bottom of the anchor well and into the, that solid piece that was on the inside. So that's all. Uh, made into one nice solid center line support there uh, which uh, uh, supports the base of the foremast and you can see that we put that that structure on this these couple of strips here uh, this uh, goes out and attaches to the to that uh, curved piece um, and covers the seam on the two deck pieces here uh, and then we have these two supports for our, uh, the uh, foremast top of the foremast step so now the cabin is uh, pretty much finished I mean assembled finishing work to be done yet so, so we'll go through the steps uh, of putting this together. I had, uh, I think before I had the front wall of the cabin in place. Uh, the next step is putting up the back wall. This piece, it's actually, it's attached to these uh, two uh, bulkheads, one on each side. And then uh, up in the corner, now you can see it over there on that side. There's a beam stringer, whatever you might call it, that runs from the uh, front cabin wall to the rear cabin wall. So one on each side. And then there's one in the middle. That's a hefty thing. It's a, uh, basically a two by eight. Uh, again, it runs all the way front to back. Now this middle one, this one needs to be a really tough piece of timber. Uh, it'd be helpful if you found one that had just a little bit of a crown in it on the up, going in the up direction. Because putting the uh, roof panels on uh, puts a load on it. And if it's, not, if it's not a good stout piece of lumber, it might show just a little bit of a sag uh, in the middle. Uh, Um, but uh, you can, you know, it's not that hard to find a good stout piece of timber for that. What we're trying to accomplish here is not having any beams to bump your head on. Uh, those ones along the edge are out of the way. And uh, the one in the middle, uh, because it's over the middle of the bridge deck uh, and at the highest point of the boat, uh, is much less likely to be a problem. And the, uh, uh, while I'm talking about the structure of the, of the uh, cabin top, let's look at the, uh, at the very top also. You can see this handrail. There's two handrails uh, that run from back to front. Uh, and those are located at the halfway point between the middle beam and the inside the cabin and the edge beams. Uh, so that uh, the uh, cabin top is stiffened by those also. Uh, and again, when you get to the point of putting that cabin top on, it's a good idea to set yourself up a block of time where you can 
basically put the top panels on and those handrails at the same time uh, because the the shape helped to shape it just a little bit uh, uh, and uh, make everything tie everything together anyhow um, no, I was getting ahead of myself there. So the back panel goes on. Those beams go in place. Um, and then the side panels are attached. Um, the side panel um, goes, uh, it's just this part, this middle part with the uh, two windows cut out. Um, and that's beveled on the bottom edge and actually tucks under uh, this piece that's uh, here, which was part of the side panel. And it's kind of a lap strake joint. This is beveled and it attaches to the inner surface of this piece and gets, uh, or gets uh, screwed into the uh, uh, back and forward uh, cabin faces. Um, and uh, after those, that side panel is on, there's this um, rear knee, I guess we could call it, um, that's attached. It's sort of attached lap straight to this piece too, but it isn't beveled at all because there's the, you'll, you'll see when you're doing it, but uh, <laughs> it works out better this way. You put a little bit of a fillet in there. And it's, it's uh, butted to the back cabin panel and screws are put from the inside into, into these pieces. All four of them are, are done. Well, okay, the two rear ones are like this, where I was saying they're, they're not beveled. And uh, they just get uh, attached with screws from the outside into them. And then there's this kind of funny gap in there that gets filled with epoxy. The front pair are a little different because uh, they're actually beveled on the uh, outer edge enough so that they, they overlap uh, this uh, combing again sort of lap strake style they're screwed from the inside out And um, that's really the cabin construction, not very many pieces. Uh, and it goes together pretty fast. Of course, there are a lot of details to finish off with here. But when you get this all done, you're going to have one fine craft. Happy sailing. <laughs>